We're now about 10 games into the season, so we're just about past the point where it feels like the season just started. Some teams are finding more success than many thought they would have, and other teams, not so much. In some instances, a slow start this year might be the last straw, while other situations have just been building up slowly over time and just need a fresh start somewhere else or a do-over. This type of stuff applies specifically to some of the best players in the league, and the teams that they play for are likely to try to go a different path moving forward. This means that a lot of very good players could be on the move as soon as this season, which brings us to the topic of today's video. Today we'll be discussing 5 star players in the NBA that have a very good chance of being traded this season, along with why and where they could be traded to. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first player up on this list of possible trade candidates is John Wall of the Washington Wizards. Wall was the first pick in the 2010 NBA Draft and was seen as a franchise player and cornerstone of a contender from the jump. He was very hyped up coming out of college and for the most part has lived up to the hype individually. He had a very good rookie season and from that point on has consistently been one of the best point guards in the league. Then when you look at how the team has performed under his leadership, you see some good things, but based on the talent level and expectations placed on the group of players for years, overall it's mainly been underachieving. The Wizards have made it to the second round of the playoffs three separate times, but every time that was as far as they got, never making it to an Eastern Conference Finals. That brings us to this season, where the Wizards have been nothing short of a disaster. They have a record of 1-7, which is the second worst record in the entire NBA, only being ahead of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Cavs lost LeBron James this summer, so they actually have an excuse to be that bad. The Wizards were supposed to be able to contend for a home court playoff series this season in a weakened East, yet the exact opposite has been the case so far. They don't play hard, and they look unmotivated on the court, and rumors of locker room issues have been swirling for quite some time now. They are still waiting for Dwight Howard to come back from an injury, but if we're being honest, Howard hasn't contributed positively to team basketball or locker rooms in years. The Wizards also have virtually no cap space moving forward to make any significant improvements to the roster, so what they have is what they're stuck with, and it clearly isn't enough. Their only options are to hope things turn around in some sense and live with being a middling playoff team every year, or they could blow it up and try the rebuilding route. With everything about this team's situation being negative, I believe they will probably blow things up sooner rather than later, and that means moving on from John Wall. Some teams that could make a trade for him are the Suns and the Pistons. The Suns are in desperate need of a point guard, as their current point guard situation is made up of an end-of-the-bench journeyman in Isaiah Cannon and a rookie in Eli Akobo. The Pistons have been a pleasant surprise this year with Blake Griffin back to playing great basketball, and adding Wall would make them serious threats in the East. The next player up on this list of stars that could be traded is actually John Wall's partner in the Washington Wizards backcourt, Bradley Beal. I just spent a lot of time talking about the Wizards issues and why they will be looking to sell in the trade market, so I'll be brief with this explanation, but Wall isn't the only one that could be on the move from that team. Both Wall and Beal have big contracts, so if they really want to commit to a rebuild, they would likely have to move both of them. Depending on the teams that the Wizards look to make a deal with, Beal might actually hold more value than Wall as well. Beal has improved immensely as a scorer as his career has gone on, and is now one of the most reliant and efficient shooting guards in the league that is also capable of scoring over 20 points a night. He's a legitimate star that often gets overshadowed in the limelight by his co-star John Wall. The two teams that could be aggressive in their pursuit of Beal are both in desperate need of someone with his skill set, and those teams are the Los Angeles Clippers and the Philadelphia 76ers. 
The Clippers have both assets to give up and cap space, which makes them a perfect landing spot for basically any star, but Beal would fit right into the system perfectly. They need a star already on the team going into next summer's free agency in order to attract another star to join them, because they can offer another max contract even if they acquire Beal. The Sixers, on the other hand, are ready to compete now, and they need a legitimate scoring threat. Ben Simmons is a great playmaker for others, but doesn't shoot from deep, which limits his scoring. Embiid is a flat-out superstar and has carried a large load, but ideally they can't keep expecting 40-point nights from him. Beal would round out the Sixers lineup perfectly, giving them floor spacing and a go-to score. They have Robert Covington, Dario Saric, numerous first-round picks, and possibly Markel Fultz as trade pieces, so some combination of that would be the offer. The next player up on this list is the most obvious choice, and that's Jimmy Butler of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Butler has been very vocal about wanting to be moved in a trade since the offseason. He got traded to the Wolves last offseason by the Bulls, and pairing him with young stars Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins was supposed to make them a serious force in the West, and early on they looked like just that, being third place in the conference for most of last season. Then, Butler got hurt, and without him the team almost fell completely out of the playoffs. Luckily, Butler returned before the season ended and helped them hold on to their playoff bid, but they only got the 8 seed and lost in 5 games in the first round. Butler has grown frustrated with the work ethic of Towns and Wiggins and their lack of effort and interest level on the defensive end of the floor. Since then, he has been doing everything he can to try to force a trade. He's been verbal in practices, he's sat out games, and he's called out just about everyone in the front office. So far, there have been two main teams trying to trade for Butler. The Houston Rockets have held talks with the Wolves on several different occasions, but nothing has come of it. The Rockets offered four first round picks for him, which seems like a pretty damn good offer, but the Wolves turned it down. They might still come to an agreement, but they just haven't yet. The Miami Heat are the other team that have had talks with the Wolves, and the Wolves would want a young and promising player such as Josh Richardson in the deal, but the Heat were hesitant to include him in an offer, which is probably where talk stalled. Expect either of these two teams to eventually come to an agreement with the Wolves to trade for Butler. Up next on this list of stars possibly on the move is Kemba Walker of the Charlotte Hornets, who has seen his name swirl in trade rumors for a few years now. Kemba got drafted back in 2011 and slowly but surely has developed into a lethal scoring threat capable of creating his own shot off the dribble and knockdown pull-up jumpers. He scored more than 20 points per game each of the last four years and was named as an all-star each of the last two years. While he individually has been very good, the Hornets have basically defined the word mediocrity. They have only made the playoffs twice in Walker's career, and they lost in the first round both times. The Hornets' front office has done a poor job constructing a viable team around Kemba by both drafting poorly and spending money in free agency poorly. This is the last year of Kemba's contract, and he is set to become an unrestricted free agent this summer, so this could be the year that the Hornets finally decide to trade him. There's basically no chance he re-signs with the team because he wants to play for a winner, so it would be in the best interest of the Hornets to get some value back for him instead of letting him walk for nothing. One team that was mentioned earlier that could be of interest in acquiring Walker's services is the Suns, who desperately need a point guard. They may not be ready to win right now, but Devin Booker gets better every year, DeAndre Ayton has shown promise so far as a rookie, and the rest of the young core have shown some good flashes. Getting Walker would speed up their timeline in the hunt to compete, which is what the team needs. Another team that could want Walker is the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks have looked seriously improved this year, and while most didn't think that they would be quite this good, they're proving a lot of people wrong. Their current point guard Eric Bledsoe has been decent so far, but Walker would be a clear upgrade and might be enough to elevate the Bucks into the same tier as the Raptors and Celtics. The final player on this list of players that will potentially get traded is Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Love started his career on the Timberwolves, where he became a dominant scorer and rebounder, and he was traded to the Cavs to join LeBron James in his quest of bringing home a championship. 
He succeeded in these efforts, helping the Cavs beat the Warriors in 2016, but now that LeBron is gone, things just aren't the same. The team is currently 1-8, which is the worst record in the league, and the team is probably better off focusing on rebuilding. Love is too good to be on a rebuilding team, and the Cavs could probably get some good value in return for him, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if they looked to move him as soon as they could, which is in January when he's legally allowed to be traded. One team that could look to add him is the Portland Trailblazers. They have a great backcourt in Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, but they haven't been enough. Adding Kevin Love may not take them to be the favorites in the West, but they would definitely be better, and they wouldn't get swept in the first round like they did last year. Another team that should be interested in Love's services is the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder have not had the start that they wanted this year, and they have struggled a bit with spacing. Love could definitely help with the spacing, and would give another consistent scoring option outside of Russell Westbrook and Paul George. If the Thunder are serious about trying to knock off Golden State, they will likely need to make a move. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.